Praise the Lord. How are you doing? My name is John Nathan Owara. I work with Scripture Union Northern Region as the Regional Ministry Coordinator. I also work with the Diocese of Lango as the Children and Youth Coordinator. I want to thank God for the opportunity that has given me to do ministry to children in primary schools, youth in secondary schools, and families. So on that note, I want to share with you about school as it is my norm, as it is my behavior. I use abbreviations to ensure that I pass on messages clearly without confusion. So I'm going to use school to pass on and explain to a student what a school is. So that when you are in school, you understand what a school is. So we'll use S, C, H, double O, L to help us explain what a school is. But I want to give a background. In Luke chapter 2, verse 52, the Bible tells us that Jesus grew both in height and in wisdom, and he was loved by God and by all who knew him. The New Living Translation tells us that Jesus grew in height, in wisdom, and he was loved by God and everybody else who knew him. Even when we know that there are those that hated him, whoever listened to him carefully loved him. This is very important. The NIV version tells us, and Jesus grew in wisdom and stature, physically fit, in favor with God and with men. School is a place where we build relationships. And it's important that these relationships help us to become better people. So let's define school. School, S is for special. Every student that goes to school, every pupil that goes to school, every teacher that is in a school should understand that they are special. You have an opportunity to be in school. You are special. You are special before God. That's why Genesis chapter 1 verse 27 tells us that God created human beings. He created them like Him to reflect His nature. He created them male and female. So when you are in school, you should understand that you are created in the image of God. You have an opportunity to be in school. You are special. You are chosen among so many. There are people that would love to be in school. There are teachers that would love to teach in a school, but they don't have the opportunity. There are teachers that are bedridden right now. There are teachers that have been chased from work because of bad behavior. There are students that have been chased from school. They have been expelled. You are special to be in school. You are special. And because you are special, you must behave well. Because you are special, you must behave well. Because people who are special don't behave like everyone else. A young girl that knows us, that she is special does not go around opening her legs for everybody. A young boy that knows he's special doesn't go on fornicating with every girl. You are special. This body is special. Your body has a design only for you. It's only that size of the head that belongs to you. It's only that arm that belongs to you. If they cut off your hand, your life might never remain the same again. Now, in case you've lost an arm, you are still special to God because you are created in the image of God. To be created in the image of God means you think like God, you have a head. God didn't give you cow dung in your head. You have the brain in there. That brain thinks. That brain thinks. It's very important that you know that you have a brain. And because you have a brain, you should be able to make right decisions. That is what God is about when he created you. Praise the Lord. It's important that you know that you are special. C, a school is a place of character development. Because you are special, you must learn to behave like Jesus Christ. Character is behavior. When, you are when, when you're behaving in a wrong way, 
it becomes difficult for us to understand whether you are special. Time for strike, you're part of the team. Time for, you know, people even strike because they're not eating meat. Is it meat that makes you special? I mean, I know meat is, meat is good, but is it meat that makes you special? No, it's not meat. It is God that has made you special. So with or without meat, you are still special. Therefore, behave well. Behave well. That's why Joshua chapter 24 verse 15 says this. And if it seems evil to you to serve the Lord, choose for yourselves this day whom you will serve. So school is a place of choice. Joshua is saying, Choose. After talking about character, because you're special, we're talking about school is a place of choice. You must choose to go to school. Why must we force you to go to school? Why? Is it for our good? It is for your good. We cannot force you to go to school. Joshua was saying, choose for yourselves this day whom you will serve. Whether the gods which your father served that were on the other side of the river or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Joshua made a decision. He chose to serve God. You, have you chosen to go to school? You know, we have two categories of people. We have those who go to school and we have those who pass through school. Those that pass through school come out with no change. They only come out with, they've grown in height only and wait. But they've not grown in wisdom like Jesus. They even come out when they have not behaved well. Which one are you? Choose to go to school. You go to school, you come out with good grades. You go to school, you come out with wisdom. You go to school, you come out with knowledge. You go to school, you come out a victor. You go to school, you come out and everybody is looking and saying, yeah, yes, that person went to school. That one went to school. That one went to school. How many of your OBs and OGs do you know who are in school? How many of your OGs and OBs do you know who are passing through school? And by the those that are passing through school will interfere with everything else that you're doing. They will ask you, let's go and drink. You're not in school to drink. They will tell you, let's go and steal. Let's go and strike. You're not in school to strike. They will tell you, Let's go and burn the teacher's quarters. You're not in school to burn anyone's house or anyone's vehicle. They will tell you, let's go for disco. You are not in school for disco. You are in school because you have chosen to go to school. That's very important. Choose to go to school. Don't choose to pass through school. And when you pass through school, when you go to school, you come out with good behavior. That's why we have rules and regulations in school. We must obey them. That's why there's discipline. Because school is a place of character development. School is a place for good behavior change. Some of us come from our villages when we are used to using uh, leaves for the latrine. It's in school that they teach us to use toilet paper. Some of us come from homes where we, 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 we bathe once in a month. So you come to school and they're telling you bathe, there's water. It's in school where they teach you to behave well, to lay your bed. I mean these things should be teaching, learning them home, but some of us don't learn them home because our, our homes are, are, are dislocated, are disjointed. School is a place of character development. H. School is a place of hard work. Hard work is of God. 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 10 tells us, For when Paul was writing to the Thessalonians, and he said, For when we were with you, we gave you this rule. If a man will not work, he shall not eat. Hard work is of God. If you don't work, you shall not eat. That's why it's important to work hard. It's important to work hard. And hard work we learn in school. That's why we go and bang winter. We read. That's why we go for prep. That's why we go for field work. We go for tours. That's why we are in class. We rewrite copy notes. School is a place of hard work. Work hard, my friend. Work hard, my friend. If you are lazy, 
your place is not school. You're supposed to be in the village somewhere. But even in the village, <laughs> who will accept you? It's in school where I learned to wake up early. It's in school where I learned to sleep enough. It's in school where I learned to stay awake through the day, working. School is a place of hard work. Oh, school is a place of obedience. We learn to obey. Luke chapter 2 verse 51 tells us something very important about Jesus. After Jesus had disappeared from his parents, then they found him. This is what happened. Then he went down to Nazareth with them, with his parents, and was obedient to them. Jesus was obedient to his parents. Even after they found him, after he had stayed away from them, he was obedient to his parents. That's why we have rules and regulations. We need to obey our parents. Our parents in school are teachers. School is a place of obedience. Obey your teachers. Obey them. And I'm not saying you obey your teachers when they tell you to have sex with them. No. I'm not saying obey your teachers when they say, uh, go and steal. No. We know what good character is, what good behavior is. So obey your teachers. You know, you, because you have beards, you have beards there, you think that now you are big enough, more bigger than your teachers. No, you are not. Just because you have a better shoe, more than your teacher, you think you're better. No, you're not. Just because you have more, a better trouser. Let me tell you, a teacher is a teacher. Even if they don't have a good shirt. That's why you are in school, to be taught. In other words, you are foolish. That's why you go to school. The only person that can help chase foolishness is the teacher. And that's why you, you don't, that's why you sit in class. You don't know chemistry and therefore you must be taught chemistry. So you are foolish of chemistry. You are ignorant of chemistry. So the teacher teaches you chemistry. You must obey that teacher. That's why you must be in class by eight or by whatever time the school tells you. Obedience is very key. At some point, even the teachers themselves were teaching you were foolish. They didn't know. So they went to school and they were taught. Now they're experts. Now they're teaching you. So please obey your teachers. Obey them. And obey your parents as well when you go home. Obedience is good. Obedience is of God. It is because of disobedience and pride that the devil was chased from heaven. You don't want to be disobedient to God, do you? So obey your teachers and parents. Another O. Obedience, sorry, in school, we learn to be organized. We learn to lay our beds. We learn to put our suitcases properly. We learn to bathe. We learn to be smart. That's why we tuck in. Tucking in is one way of helping you get organized. That's why we ask you to wash your socks. Girls, wash your knickers. How can you be a girl? You are disorganized. You are knicker. Eh, some part of this part here is, you, it used to be white, now it's just brown. And you're also there. In, 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 you know, how can you be a boy and the armpits of your shirt is brown? You need to be organized. What kind of doctor will you make? What kind of lawyer will you make? We learn this in school to be organized. Lay your bed. It's important. You are, you are a student. You are in school. That's why we have a timetable. At eight, from you have to a double lesson or a triple lesson or a single lesson. That is learning to be organized. They are preparing you for the job market ahead. They are preparing you for ministry ahead. Now we have pastors, we have men of God who went to school, who passed through school. They didn't go. They passed through school. They don't know how to manage time. You tell them 15 minutes, they take 30. You tell them, they don't know how to manage time. Those ones, those ones passed through school. They never, they never learned. They could have gotten good grades, but they never learned time management. It is taught in school. Time management helps you to be organized. Lastly, a school is a place of love. L is for love. And I mean, Jesus told his disciples and the people, after he was asked in Luke 10, 27, he says, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul and with all your strength and with all your might. 
and love your neighbor as you love yourself. If you don't love yourself, you'll never love others. Love your neighbor as you love yourself. It's first loving myself. If you love yourself, my dear sister, don't open those legs. Close them. And I'm speaking to you who's watching this. Close those legs. You can't say you love yourself and your zip is always down, you young man. What's wrong with you? You can't say you love yourself. Remember, you only have one body to live. One body like this. One life. Should anything happen to you, in fact, I want to be more honest and strict and say this to you. You cannot have a spare part in a shop. Let's give an example. If you have a problem with your penis, and for me in scripture we call a penis a penis. In case you have a problem with your penis, you can't go to the shop and say, shopkeeper, this penis has a problem, give me a spare part. It's not there. You're given once. When you are there, you're drinking, and they beat your eye and they remove the eye. You can't replace the eye. You cannot replace it. They break your arm, they cut it. You can't replace. That's why you need to be careful. You need to love yourself. Love yourself so much that, that nothing wrong can happen to you. Don't be the one who makes a decision to destroy your own self. Love yourself. Then you can love others. You can't say you love yourself when you're sleeping on a bed sheet for three months you've never washed it. You can't say you love yourself when you have not brushed your teeth. Your teeth is smelling. You can't say you love yourself when your socks are smelling. It's dangerous. So love, love. In school, we learn to love. We learn to love God in school. We learn to love people in school. We learn to love our parents in school. We learn to love what God has given us. Galatians chapter 5 verse 14 tells us this. It says, the entire law is summed up in a single command. Love your neighbor as yourself. So school is a place where we know that we are special to be in school. School is a place where we choose to be there, not pass through it. We choose to be there. We choose to behave well, good character. School is a place where we learn obedience. School is a place of organization. School is a place of love. If you're a student, take this lesson serious. Be in school. Be in school. Stay in school and come out as God's child who has gone to school, not who has passed through school. God bless you.